Good morning. Has anybody said that prayer of that song and meant it? Here I am. Use me, Lord. I lay but down my life for yours. And, and when we're willing to lay down our lives for him, the Bible says whoever will, is willing to lose his life will gain it. And what he's saying is whatever you're giving up is nothing compared to what you're going to get. In life, everyone, everyone wants change for the better. But this is what I've learned about change. Change is only caused by pain. That means to change is to go through pain. And, and so I want the pain and I want, I mean, I want the change and I want the gain, but I don't want to go through the pain of transformation. We are here, even today, to go through some pain, to let go of our old life so we can have a new life. And if you're willing to let go, come on, if you're willing to let go of that old life, you can have a new life. And this is... Tonight, we're going to have another opportunity. Tonight, I, I want to tell you, it's going to be epic. It's going to be the most important meeting we've had all year long. We're going to be talking about leadership. It's our first leadership lead night. I think we have 284 tickets left. That's it. This is what I would say. Talk yourself into coming tonight. You could talk yourself out, but this is the idea. You'll never grow with a, under a spirit of comfort. In order for you to grow and become a leader, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone and do things not because you feel like it, do things because you know you need to do it. How many understand? That's called discipline. Say with me, discipline. So tonight is going to be the most important meeting we've had all year long. This is tonight, you're going to get an impartation of the most important impartation you could get as a believer of leadership. Leadership is influence. That means we are here to impact the world with a message, with a lifestyle. And until you become a leader, you're not a person of impact. We don't, we don't have leadership meetings like this. This is going to be the first one we're going to have. People from all over are coming here to the Way World Outreach to get an impartation of leadership. All I'm saying, people are flying from Hawaii to get here tonight. Make sure you fly from San Bernardino, from Rialto, wherever you're from, LA. Get here tonight. Get your ticket. Invest in the greatest investment you can make. The greatest investment you can make is in yourself. How many understand that? It's not in a stock market, it's in you. And if you could get, make that investment, you'll get a return where you've invested. So tonight, I'm, not, I'm just letting you know, get ready for tonight. It's going to be life transformation. You're going to get, if you get one idea, this one idea will change your life forever. Everyone that's speaking tonight is not speaking about theory. Every person that's speaking is a leader of influence and has succeeded in life. Understand that. There, no one is coming up here. Well, this, this is how I think you should do it. They've already done it, and you're going to get an impartation for people that have succeeded. How many want to come tonight? Come on. I'm telling you, get your ticket. Go online, get your ticket. Tonight, I think there's 284 tickets left. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. I'm so grateful for everyone that's here. There's not a person that's here that you don't have a great plan for. And I understand that you're, you're here to teach us, Holy Spirit. We're here to learn to, today. We're here to receive. We're here to grow. And I just thank you, Lord, as we learn and we hear and we understand your instructions and apply it. This is what's going to happen. We're going to start experiencing su success in every part of our lives. Have your way today. Teach us, Holy Spirit. We open ourselves up. We're going to be intentional listeners today. We're going to leave here with understanding. We're going to leave here, Father, with wisdom. We're going to leave here, Father, with new vision. We're going to leave here with transformation, healing. We're going to leave here with salvation, new beginnings. And it's all going to happen because of this teaching right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. 
We've been on a, on a series called I Am, and today we're going to be covering one of the most important I Ams there is. I am a learner. Say it with me. I am a... I could have titled it I'm a disciple, because, but Christian already did that one. Because a disciple means a learner, a student, a follower of Jesus' teachings. When we say we are disciples of Jesus Christ, all we're saying is that we're students and we are learners. Say with me, we are learners. It's not something we do, it's something I am. I am a learner. To learn means this, to acquire knowledge or skill in by study, instruction, exposure to example or experience. Learning is a skill we can all develop. How do we learn? Is by, uh, to acquire, we acquire knowledge of skill by study, instruction, or exposure to an example. Tonight, we're going to have exposure to people that have succeeded, whether it's building an organization or succeeded financially. But tonight, as you learn wisdom, you learn how to succeed. There was a prophetic word that God gave us, and I'm just going to read a portion of it this year. And this is what it said. This year will be a year of supernatural growth because of the favor that I've placed over your life. Areas that you've been barren and unfruitful will begin to produce and create a mighty harvest. Do not be afraid of dreaming big because I am a God that has no limits. Remember that all things are possible for those who believe. This is what God's saying. I have promised you that I will give you infinitely more than you can ask Think according to my power that is work within you. The growth will come with specific instructions. I'll say it again. The growth will come with specific instructions. If you follow the step-by-step -step instructions that I will give you, you will see a release of my favor that will cause mega growth. How many are ready to receive mega growth? Now, the growth comes with instructions. How does growth come with you know what that means? For you to succeed or for you to grow, you need to be taught how to succeed, taught how to grow, and taught how to be victorious. So let's talk about learning a little bit. What does the Bible say about learning? Number one, the purpose of learning is to teach us how to live a disciplined and successful life. In Proverbs 1.3, it says, their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives to help them do what is right, just, and fair, fair. This is all it means. Those that learn are our learners. They become successful as a result of learning and applying what they've learned. But by default, those who do not become learners are undisciplined and, uh, and unsuccessful in everything they do. Well, we're, when we're in this room, we're here not to hear only, but we're here to learn. Are there any learners in this room? Learners. Not everyone learns at the same pace because some people are actually paying more attention than others. There are others in this room that are desperate to learn because they're understanding that right now there's an area in my life that's not successful. There's an area in my life that I'm failing. There's an area of my life where my dreams and ambitions and vision is not coming to pass and I feel stuck. But understand this, no matter what you're facing, there are instructions on how to succeed in your relationships, in your businesses, in your ministries, in your family life, whatever, any area that you're struggling in. You're just instructions away from being successful in. That's why learners are the ones that learn discipline. And you know what discipline is? It's the ability to know what to do and do it. So what is discipline? It's knowing what to do and what? And doing. We're disciplined when we know what to do and we do it. We're undisciplined when we know what to do and not do it. It's easy to be undisciplined, but understand this. If we remain undisciplined and we remain unlearned and we remain, I would even say a word that shouldn't offend you, but ignorant, 
This is what's going to happen. You're going to wish for better results, but you're never going to get them because you succeed and you succeed. Success is not luck. Stop looking and being jealous of somebody else that succeeded and say, I wish I could be like them. I'm just not fortunate. I'm unlucky. I just seem like I roll the wrong numbers on the dice every time. I just get it, didn't get the right cards dealt to me. This is not gambling. Life is a skill. And when you learn, come on, when you learn how to live life, you can learn how to be successful. You could be successful in every single thing that you touch. Come on, give God some praise that life is a skill. And you gain skill through learning. Number two, what the Bible says about learning. Teach a wise person and they will learn even more. A wise person is one who has learned the right thing to do and does it. Have you made up your mind, first of all, that you want to do what's right? Now, what a question. Maybe you've never been asked that question. Have you made up your mind yet that you want to start doing what's right. Because if you've not made up your mind to do what's right, you're not in the category of the wise yet. And this is the idea. Those who have not determined to live right are unwise. And this is what's going to happen to the unwise. They're going to become dumber. Oh, wow. It's good. It's got quiet. I didn't call you dumb. <laughs> this idea. If you've not determined that I want to start living right, I want to know what's right. And I want to start doing what's right. Those that have determined, I want to know what's right. And I want to do what's right. This is what the Bible is promising you. This is what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you more understanding. I'm going to give you more wisdom, which is going to lead to greater success. Is there anyone that wants a life that's not limited by your economy? It's not limited by your assets. It's not limited come, by your education. Come on, it's, it's only determined by the wisdom that you're practicing. Anyone can succeed. The Proverbs 9, 9, look at the scripture. Teach a wise person, and they will become wiser. Wow. Teach a wise... What happens to when you teach a wise person? They become what? That means right now, someone in this room is going to be wiser than they were before they came in. And you know what that means? Because you're becoming wiser, you're going to become more successful. None of us have it all together because there's levels of success. And I'm going to the next level. This church is going to the next level. Come on, your organization can go to the next level. Your business can go to the next level. Your relationships can go to the next level. Come on, your finances can go to the next level. But it's not going to happen because you rolled the right dice. It's going to happen because you applied the right instruction. You know, all it's saying is we don't need to remain ignorant victims. That means we can learn how to be victorious. We can learn how to win. We can learn how to succeed and make winning a lifestyle. Is that right? It's true. Teach a wise person and they become wiser. Teach a, teach a person who does right. This is the idea. Until you start doing a little right, you're not leading to anything greater than you have today. Stop waiting for someone to rescue your emotions. If someone just come and rescue, rescue, what do you think is a fairy tale? This is life. Someone say, this is life. And if you don't do it the right way, life's going to not treat you the right way. Imagine that some of us have more faith in a broken down boyfriend than you do in God's word. If you would just come back and God says, come back. That's old news. God, I got rid of him. 
so you could be set free. And come on, give. Uh, I got rid of him so I could get your attention. Some of the tragedy that you're experiencing is going to turn out for something real good. Because God is saying, if it wasn't for what you're going through right now, I would have never got your attention. Is there anybody here that's ready to listen to what God is saying so you can start getting God's results? Come on, I'm warming up. Tonight's going to be crazier. Amen? Amen? Teach a person who does right, and they will learn even more. Teach a person that does right, and what's going to happen to those people? They're what? They're learning more. I'm learning every day. Is there anybody learning every day? I'm growing every day. I'm not worried about going backwards except because I'm applying instruction. I'm not going backwards. I'm becoming better. I'm becoming smarter. I'm becoming more good looking. I'm just kidding. I'm doing everything I can to improve my life. And, I'm, and how I do it is I apply instruction. I don't come here to hear. I come here to apply. If you don't like the results you're getting, stop blaming your mama. Stop blaming your grandma. Stop blaming your abuser. Stop giving them that power and start looking yourself in the mirror. I know they messed me up. I know they abused me, but I'm not going to let them control my thoughts, control my actions, control my emotions. From here on out, I'm going to take control over my life. I'm going to hear instruction, apply it, and then get guaranteed success. Me and Lisa have been married for 30-some years. I don't know, 33? There we go. Jesus died at 33, so we're ready for another level. But this is what I do know. If you're having, if you're married in this room and you're struggling in your relationship, this is all that needs to happen. Both of you need to start thinking like me and Lisa. And when you start thinking like us, you have the relationship we have. Amen. Why? Because success leaves clues. And when you start doing it like successful people, you get their same results. Come on! Someone should be happy right now because the depression right now is leaving you because now you're realizing, I could do something about this. Your business can turn around. Your family can turn around. Your ministry can turn around. Your kids can turn around. Your emotions can turn around. Your team can turn around. And all you need to do is get your life to turn around by hearing the instructions and start doing it. Are there any learners in this room? You know why the wise love to learn? Because they love to succeed. They love winning. <laughs> That's why they love to learn, because they know that the more I learn, the more I succeed. Right. Now, that word success, let's look at it for a second. It means one who has achieved, uh, th to be successful is one who has achieved success. They've achieved their goals, dreams, prosperity, it means honor, wealth, victory, peace. Does anyone want some peace in your life? It means harmonious relationships, health, etc. God wants you to have harmonious relationships. Do you know that? Do you know God wants you to have peace when you go to bed at night? Do you know that God wants you to have, come on, healthy emotions? This is what God wants. He said, follow my instructions, it leads to that. Number three, what does the Bible say about learning? The wise will pay whatever price they need to pay to gain understanding. The wise will pay whatever they need to pay to get understanding. The wise value wisdom over money. They value wisdom over convenience. They wise value wisdom over this world, what the world has to offer. They value wisdom because they know if they acquire the wisdom, they'll have it all. If you get the wisdom, you have it what? That's it. God wants to turn your life around. But this, this, this is so, so important. Until you get affected by this word and you start hearing the word and applying it 
and start getting success, this is the reality. You can't influence nobody. Nobody wants to be a failure. Follow me, follow me. You to what, pit? Follow you to your bad attitude? Follow you to your self-destruction? Follow you to those dumb ideas? I'm still smiling. <laughs> Understand, I am not condemning no one. I, I just want to shock you back into reality. You become a leader when you become successful in an area. You become successful in an area when you apply the instructions to succeed in that area. There's instructions for every area. And if you apply the instruction of God in every area, you'll be successful in every area. Christians, come on, you should have a following because you're succeeding in areas that this world hasn't figured out how to succeed in, but you got the secret formula. You're hearing the instructions, you're applying it, and you're getting results that they wish they could get because they don't know you know. Someone's going to break out of a rut. Like, I've been going to church. It's not working. Going to church won't work until you start working what you're being taught. That's what the Bible says. Don't be, a, don't be a hearer of the word. Be a doer. You don't. See, I, I know. I, I already know. I already know. I already know. No, you don't know until you apply. What you apply is what you know. You've heard of it, but until you do it, you'll never see the power of it. Right? Are you still with me? Proverbs 4, 7. Look at this is cool. The beginning of wisdom, this is crazy, is to obtain wisdom. That I like, I, what? Like, that is so simple. Why do we make this so complicated? You know why we make it complicated? Because we don't want to change. Well, what did he mean by that? <laughs> the beginning of wisdom is to obtain wisdom. You'll never be wise until you have a desire to become wise and get it. Someone say, get it. Yeah. Is wisdom available to everybody? Yes. The Bible, there's a scripture that says that wisdom is crying on the streets. Well, no one's listening. Look what it says. The beginning of wisdom is to obtain wisdom. Look at it. Give up everything you have in order to gain understanding. Wisdom is so important that you should be willing to give up every treasure, give up your time, give up your convenience, give up your schedule, to gain wisdom. Tonight, you're going to get an opportunity. You could talk yourself out of gaining wisdom that's going to be expressed tonight, or you could talk yourself into it. Some people are going to talk themselves into watching YouTube for two hours. Nonsense. Watching a cat play the piano. <laughs> and your life's falling apart. If we all become learners, then we could become leaders. You cannot teach something to someone that you have not mastered yourself. There's a demand over your life when you've learned something, because when you've learned something, you could teach something. You've learned something when you apply it, and you've learned something when not only you've applied it, you've seen the results. Now you could tell people, follow me because I've achieved it, and because I've achieved that, I could teach you how to achieve it. That's called leadership. The foundation of leadership is learning. I hate school. I hate church. I hate studying. I hate reading. Oh. Then this is what's going to happen. You're going to remain where you're at. And I'm going to tell you that you're not going to remain where you're at. You're going to go backwards. Because either you're growing or you're dying. 
And to grow and to learn is a verb. Someone say learning is a verb. It's not a passive, come on, it's not a passive sport. You got to be involved. You guys got that? I love what the Bible says. All right. I love, now, paying for wisdom. Paying for, I was, I just looked up some leadership courses, how much they cost. There was a course, cal um, calib calibration and influence cost. Just that cost you fourteen hundred bucks, fourteen ninety five. Gaining a competitive advantage costs that course costs eighty five hundred bucks. Leading mindfully costs three thousand four hundred and fifty. Women in leadership nine thousand four hundred and fifty. That's cold blooded. Charge the women anymore. That sounds like some kind of discrimination there. <laughs> Servant leadership, that course costs 9450 Right now, this, the, the, the guru thing out there in the world, they've discovered something, that the highest and greatest form of leadership is servant leadership. I wonder where they learned that from. The first and only person that ever taught leadership in leader, servant leadership was Jesus. Jesus is the one that coined the phrase to be the great, to be a leader, you must be a servant of all. Right. Now, this is what's doing. The, the universities are teaching, they're finding out that the greatest influencer in the world is Jesus, and he did it through servant leadership. That means it's not a leadership that's focusing on selfish gain. It's a, ser it's a leadership that's focusing on helping people achieve, succeed, overcome, and experience the life that God meant for them. Serving people. Amazing. 9400 bucks. We could learn that in church. Tonight's 25 bucks. And I guarantee you this, there's going to be, see, most of these professors that are teaching this stuff, they're teaching theory. They've never done it. They're teaching book knowledge, not experience. And the other thing is the anointing of leadership, the highest level of leadership anointing and impartation comes from the greatest leader in the universe, which is God himself. God created leadership. I don't understand. Come on. Jesus in three years is still influencing us. Tonight, I'm, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be an impartation of leadership. And, and the reason there's people coming from all over some of them already know that part of, part of the teaching I'm going to be teaching tonight, and I've been, I've been doing some, some leadership teachings and seminars for businesses, and because they've heard they're traveling to get here, I'm telling you what's in this house is we have a gift of leadership, and we're going to start influencing the world, and it's going to start here tonight. Tonight, we're birthing out leadership. Come on, influence all over the world. Our church needs to show up. How many believe that? Now, I'm going to give you four quick steps to learning. Some, I want to learn. I want to be a learner. Does anybody want to be a learner? Does anybody want to be a learner, like a lifetime learner? I just don't want to learn just to overcome my present problem. I want to be a learner for the rest of my life to help people overcome problems. For the, Every problem I have is a learning experience. Every failure I experience is just a learning experience. I'm willing to go do some mistakes so I can learn some lessons. I'm not going through a problem to stay in the problem. I'm going through a problem to overcome the problem. I might be going through a trial, a difficulty right now, but it's just a school for my next level. What God is saying right now, stop getting depressed about your trials and tribulations because if you'll just hold on and you'll just learn, by the time you're done, you're going to be equipped for your next level. There's someone right now, you're going through hell, but you're not going to stay in hell. God's going to lead you out of it so you can pull some people out of hell. But if you didn't go through it, you wouldn't know how to overcome it. And if you don't know how to overcome it, you can't help someone else overcome it. Right now, your trial is your school. Stop crying about it. Complaining about it. Stop trying to give up and quit. It's time to fight through and it's time to get a pen and paper and learn how to get out of the thing that right now is trying to overpower you.
You can overcome depression. You can overcome fear. You can overcome a rut. You can overcome a bad experience. Come on. You can overcome a trial if you apply some wisdom on it. Someone say we can learn. I love it. I love it. I believe, this is what I believe. I could turn any church around. Why? Because I know how to do it. Take me a church to a church that has 20 people in it. Leave me there for a year, and I guarantee we'd have at least a thousand. Well, Pastor, that's pretty, pretty arrogant of you. It's not, it's not arrogant, is I know how to do it. When you don't, when you know how to do stuff, you're not overwhelmed anymore. Because you know how to do it. One of the ways to overcome your stress and anxiety is to get some knowledge. As long as you don't know what to do, you're worried and stressed out and you're hoping to win the lotto. If I just win the lotto, that's your prayer. Oh, lotto gods, oh, lotto gods. Or some of us are going to the gambling casinos and you're praying. <laughs> Jesus. And you get sevens. Thank you, Jesus. More praise at the gambling table than you're giving praise to God your whole life. You win one, you lose 10, but you think you're a winner. And God says, you start following me. Come on, you'll play 10 and you'll win 10 because I guarantee you, I don't lose and I'm not leading you to lead you. I'm leading you to victory. Four steps. Number one, first step, show up to class to hear instruction. I'm so proud of you that have tuned in online that are here today. You showed up for class. You could have gave in to your weakness and stayed sleeping for another half hour. But you got up every Sunday. You're coming to class. Every Sunday, you're going to get instruction. And if you apply the instruction, this is what's going to happen. You'll be more successful. You can't afford to miss one of the classes. I've been going to church for 49 years straight. 49 years of going to church without any gaps. Is there any gaps? Never. Why would I forfeit my schooling? I come to get instruction. I come to learn because there's too many people dependent on I getting it so I can help them get it. I got to unlock this problem. I got to overcome this obstacle. I got to get through this trial and tribulation because after I get through it, I can help someone else get through it. I can't afford to miss a class because I'm in a real battle. I'm in a real fight and I need some real battle instructions for the fight that I'm in today. I'm fighting bigger battles than I've ever fought because I'm getting ready for bigger victories than I've ever experienced. Is there anybody here fighting a big battle? It's just a sign you're getting ready for a big victory. Give God some praise. Thank God for your trouble. Show up to class. I feel I could just do church at home. Yeah, right. You're trying, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to talk yourself out of the process of learning. If you don't have the discipline to show, you don't have the discipline to learn. A big part of becoming a disciplined learner is developing a discipline to show up to the classes. First discipline that a learner must develop is showing up. That's half the battle. In Hebrews 10, 25, it says, do not stop going to church meetings. What does that mean? <laughs> this idea, stop justifying not going to church. Well, church is wherever I make it. 
Now, you can lie to yourself and make excuses and justify your lack of discipline, but don't expect to get the results of those that are doing it when you're just thinking about it. Doers and thinkers don't get results, the same results. Don't stop going to church meetings. Some people do stop. Some people stop doing what it takes to learn. And once you stop doing what it takes to learn, you stop learning. And when you stop learning, you stop growing. And when you stop growing, you start dying. If you cannot be consistent in showing up for practices, you'll never be consistent in the game. A big part of getting an education is the endurance to show up to classes, turn into homework, to overcome them, do the tests. Come on, take those tests. That's a big part of the development of your character. Stop talking yourself out of showing up. I try to talk myself out of showing up to the gym every week. <laughs> Half the time I show up, I force myself to get there. But once I show up, I work out. Half the battle is showing up to church. Half the battle is showing up to Holy Warriors. Half the battle, come on, showing up to your small group. Half the battle is showing up to your training. Half the battle is showing up to your study time. Half the battle, come on, half the battle is showing up to the meeting. But help each other to be strong. You must do it all the more. All of a sudden, you shouldn't be showing up to less classes. You should be showing up to more classes because we're in the last days and you're going to need more instruction. Last week's instructions aren't good enough for this week's trials. Step number two, listen to comprehend. Listen to comprehend. Matthew eleven fifteen. 15. He who has ears to hear, let him, let him be listening. Someone said, let him be what? What he's saying is possible for you to have ears and not understand anything you're hearing and only what you understand can you apply and only what you apply will make a difference listen listening look at listening and let the, him consider let him consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing we we hear to comprehend say it with me we hear to what do you understand do you understand what did you learn today if someone asks you, what'd you learn today? You should be able to tell them, I learned this, I learned this, I learned this. And then we know you learned it when you change your behavior, change your thoughts and behavior that actually you start applying what you never applied and you start getting results that you never gotten. And they start looking at your results and say, wait a second, you're happier than you've ever been. You're more successful than you've ever been. Come on, you're more disciplined than you've ever been. What happened to you? I stopped being just a hearer. I stopped just hearing it. I started to come show up to understand it because I came here to change my life, change my family, change my direction, change my future. Amen. Amen. But what I need is a prophetic word. Someone prophesied to me. Look, you got enough prophesy, proph prophecy in the scripture. You want more instructions? You haven't even obeyed the instructions I gave you in scripture. Whoop, there it is. No. Compromise means to understand the meaning of. Understand the what? You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Truth does not set you free. It's truth you understand is what sets you free. You only grow through new revelation and understanding. Your business cannot go to the next level. Your family cannot go to the next level. Your relationships can't go to the next level until you learn something you didn't know and apply it. We're going to teach you how to do marriages and relationships and succeed in life and overcome and get promotions and build businesses. Come on. God wants his people to be successful. He wants his people to be prosperous. And why shouldn't they if they're applying the instruction that leads to it? So what's the next step? Someone say comprehend. Step number three. Oh, you know, I say something like this. All of us have a learning curve. Now, a learning curve is the rate of someone's progress in learning a new skill. 
a steep learning curve involves learning very quickly. That means when someone has a like, steep learning curve, that means they're learning something like faster. And how, how do you get to the point that you, become, you start learning quicker? What you do is you begin to learn what's being taught right now and apply it. And the more you learn and apply, the quicker learner you'll become. I, I would say I'm a slow learner. I feel like I am. And the reason I, I'm a slow learner, I, I think there's a reason. I want to make sure that I understand what's being taught because I'll apply it for the rest of my life. But once I learn it and I apply it, I go into a steep learning curve. And not only a steep learning curve, I start going into an aggressive success curve. You guys understand that? You got to stop putting your faith in people and circumstances, the economy and government, and start putting it, come on, in God and his instructions. You determine how your life's going to be. I'm not no victim. I'm victorious. You got that right. I caused my success. Right? Come on. If you do it right, it will end right. If you do it wrong, it will end wrong. No, I think I could do it wrong and still get good results. You're dumb. That's why you're going to end up in prison. Some dumb criminals. So what can you do? I said one of, one of the things that you could do to increase your learning curve is take notes. Say it with me, take notes. What you write down, you own. All I'm saying is show up to church with a notebook. I would say record. Pay attention. Put effort in. Lean in. What, what, what'd you say? What, 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 what? I need to make sure I get that. Oh, man, I almost missed that. <laughs> You need to study and pay attention to preaching like your life depends on it. Because see, I'm telling you, if you're a casual listener and you don't participate and lean in, you'll never comprehend. And what you can't comprehend will never change your life because you'll never apply it. All you'll be able to say is, that was good. What did he talk about? I don't know, but he great. I love it. I love the way. <laughs> I love the way Pastor Mark teaches. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't want you to be my fan. I want to be your teacher. This is what I mean by that is... If you really want to make your pastor and your leaders in your life happy, start applying what they're teaching and start getting the results. My reward is your success. Come on. We only succeed when we get it, when we apply it. Someone say, take notes. So what are the benefits of taking notes? Increases your ability to focus. Engages your mind. Number two, increases your comprehension. Number three, overcomes distractions. Number four, improves your memory. Number five, makes you more creative. Could it be that you were more attentive to getting that girl's number than getting God's instruction? What was that, baby? What was that? Look at my phone. What was that number? What was that number, baby? What was that number? 909? 909? 909? Eight seven one eight seven eight seven four eight seven four. All right, nineteen forty five. Okay, nineteen forty five. Okay, I'm gonna send you a text right now. Make sure I got it right. Did you get it? Okay, that's good. What's your name again? And you feel like you accomplished something. I'm a hustler, man. I got that number. I got her digits. <laughs> And when you come to church, you come out, you're daydreaming. You're thinking about going to the bathroom. You're thinking about what you're going to eat after church. And God is saying right now, these instructions can change your life forever. Why would you give more attention to those digits that you'll give to my instruction? Number three, immediately apply what you've learned. 
Philippians 4, 9, practice what you've learned and re received from me. What does that mean? This stuff's simple. What I teach you, do it. As you practice it, this is what happens. You become skilled. That's what happens. Only what you practice over and over will become a skill. We're not just coming to learn this stuff. We're trying to change our skills. And when you become skilled, you start getting consistent results. Nobody wants an unskilled surgeon. Is this your first? Guys, I want you to be patient with me. This is my first eye surgery. <laughs> Am I missing? <laughs> I say, nah, man, give me somebody who's had some skill that's done this over and over. And it's the same thing. Come on, with your friends and your family. They're looking for someone that's not just talking theory. They've actually done it. They have some experience. They've gone through some battles. They, come on, they've applied this instruction and they've seen that the Word of God is fail proof. Come on, give me somebody that's just not talking about it. Give me somebody that's living it and getting results. That's called leadership. I'm telling you, his tickets are going fast. Someone's buying their tickets right now for tonight. Real learning and retention comes from applying what you learn. You really learn it when you apply. You really learn it when you what? That means next week, if you come ready to take notes, you learn something. Well, I'm not going to take notes. I don't like taking notes. Okay. All that's going to happen, you're not going to get the retention. And if you don't get the retention, you don't get the, the steep learning curve. So that means 10 years of going to church are going to be like one month going to church. Well, there's other people going one month and they're getting 10 years of instruction, not because they're any better. They're just getting instructions. They're retaining instructions. They're applying it and they're actually growing. We look at this, look at this percentage. We retain 5% of what we learn through hearing a lecture. We retain 10% of what we learn through reading. We retain 20% of what we learn through audio and visual. We retain 30% of what we learn when we see a demonstration. We retain 50% of what we learn when we, when we are engaged in a group discussion. We retain 75% of what we learn when we practice what we've learned. Imagine having a bucket you're putting water in and it's only holding 10% of the water. The rest of it's leaking. How long is it going to take for you to fill that bucket? You never will fill it because it's just leaking. And until you begin to apply what you've learned, this is what's going to happen. You're going to constantly be leaking. And that means you could be in church your whole life and still be a child instead of a mature adult that's actually producing. And God wants to teach you to maturity. That the troubles that you're going through, you actually conquer and you never fear them again because now you know how to fight that demon. You know how to fight that situation. You know how to overcome. And now you become, come on, now you become a trainer. Come on, you not only get a victor victory, you're more than a conqueror. I'm getting victory, but I'm more than a conqueror. I'm helping others get victory. I'm learning this stuff. And you know what's so great? Every one of us can master it. Amen? Amen. And the fourth step, teach others what you've learned. Someone say, teach others. Look at this stat. We retain 90% of what we learn when we immediately teach someone else what we've learned. You know what that means? After you leave here, because of your great note-taking, you need to sit down with somebody. Let me let you know what I learned here. Some of us need to go over this lesson with your own kids. Some of you need to go over this lesson with your coworkers. Some of you guys are managers and you need to start taking this lesson and start, come on, seasoning, seasoning your teams with this kind of wisdom so they'll start getting, come on, a bigger hunger and appetite to learn and apply. We're going over these fundamentals over and over, not because we're trying to bore you. We're trying to lead you to success. And this is how you learn. Apply it, apply it, apply it. Amen? Amen. So now, In 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, it says, Take the things you heard me saying in front of many other witnesses and pass them on to faithful people who are also capable of teaching. That's how we grow. We learn it, 
We apply it. We teach it. Say it with me. We learn it. We apply it. We teach it. Say it with me. We learn it. We apply it. We teach it. Say it with me. We learn it. We apply it. And we teach it. If you do that for the rest of your life, you're going to become an awesome leader. You're going to grow. And not only that, you're going to have a following. When people have their problems and their hurts and their pains, they're going to say, I need to talk to you. I need some help. I've seen the progress that you're getting. Will you give me your secret sauce? And you say, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Are you ready for it? And then you teach them. And when you can help others succeed, you're going to be a great leader. And I'll tell you, your life is going to be so full. It's going to be called fulfilled. Yeah, does anyone want to fulfill life? It can start today. Now we're going to end it with this. I always want to give an opportunity to become, this is the idea, become a disciple of Jesus Christ. What is it? A learner. Now, there's only two ways to live. You live by your own rules, do it your own way, which is going to lead to depression, emptiness, confusion, self-destruction. For sure, it's going to end that way because the undisciplined end up living unsuccessful lives. And I'm not talking about you not succeed in the area of life. You could, I, I, I was hearing this, uh, this interview, it was this week, and, and there was a young man that went to Millionaire uh, Airlines, which is a private jet airlines, and he was standing out there asking people, can he look at their jets? They were all millionaires that were flying these private jets. And he kept asking, can I see your jet? Can I see your jet? I'm a YouTuber. Can I see your jet? Finally, one of the guys says, yeah, you can see my jet. So he let him in the jet. And he asked him, how much did the jet cost? He goes, $47 million. And the guy's a billionaire. He had a great year, so he bought the jet. And he ended up going on a trip with him to Boston. It just turned out that he went on a trip with him and he interviewed him the whole time. And after he was interviewing him, he said, what's the most important thing that you do in life? And this is the dumbest answer I've ever heard. I stretch. Because I started stretching, and I'm an inch taller. He goes, well, how do you stretch? He goes, I have a, I have a stretch teacher. Well, how much do you pray for that? How much do you pay for that stress, that stretch teacher? I pay him $2,500 a day to help me stretch. So the YouTuber says, he's on the plane, can you show me? So the guy gets down on the ground and goes, stretches. Like. <laughs> and the guy goes, wow. And you know what it showed me? You could gain all kinds of success and all kinds of money, but it doesn't mean that you're really successful. Because if you really think that stretching is the greatest thing you could ever do. You don't have a purpose for your life. There's something missing. The greatest thing you could ever do is give your life to Jesus and make a difference in people's lives for the rest of your life. You know what God's saying? Let me give it to you so you can give it to them freely as you receive, freely give. Now, Jesus, when he came, he just said this, and I, I'm going to give you an offer. You can say yes or no, but I'm telling you, it's, it's, I want you to understand, forget about Marco, it's Jesus. And he says this, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give you a rich and satisfying life or an abundant life. And this is all God's saying, will you receive the life I'm giving you? Will you make a choice today? To follow me as your mentor, not me, Jesus as your mentor, as your teacher. And God says, if you do, I promise you, I'll lead you besides still, still waters, peace, places of peace. I'll lead you to green pastures, places of provision. And you shall not want. That means everything that you need in life, in your emotions with your family, your struggles. And how do you come? You come the way you are. You don't fix your life and say, come to Jesus. No, God, God says, I fix your life. Let me lead you. You come with your addiction. You come with your pain. You come with your failure. 
We all come the same way. You say, Pastor, do you have your whole act together? No, I don't. I, every day I'm dependent on my shepherd leading me. I got issues. I'm growing every day. I'm not the same I used to be, and I'm better than I was, but I still got a long way to go. But that's just life. I love it. But I am following the right leader because some of us are following the thief right now, and he's stealing your dreams, stealing your joy, stealing your sleep, stealing your health, stealing your family. And God says, if you keep following the thief, he'll keep ripping you off. See, it's not that you're missing. You're unlucky is you have the wrong leader. And this is some good news. You could choose a new leader. Even sports teams know this. Change the coach and change the record. You know, I was listening to some this week where um, they were talking about Lou Holtz. He was a college coach and he went into six universities that had losing records and turn every single one of them around into winners. All they did was change the coach. And today, if you're willing to change your coach and begin to say, I'm done doing it my way and the devil's way, I wanna do it God's way, you can receive the new life, you can receive forgiveness, you can receive empowerment, you can receive Jesus into your life and he'll save you, forgive you, and give you a gift of eternal life. Not only do you start winning now, you'll win for eternity. It's your choice. But to reject Jesus is to stay in the same situation you're in. Nothing will ever change. I'm going to count to three. You're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want change in my life. If Jesus is asking me to follow him, I want to follow him. I'm not sure if I would to die right now to go to heaven, but I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. I want to be set free. I want a new beginning. I want to be healed. I want to start winning where I've been losing. I need Jesus to guide me. And I'm going to make a decision today to become a learner, a follower, a student of Jesus. If you're willing to make that decision, your life can change right now by a decision. Nothing changes until you're willing to change. Nothing changes until you're willing to change. Is there anybody here that's saying, I'm ready to change today and accept Jesus as my mentor, my teacher, my leader. I'm ready to follow him. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. I'm ready to receive eternal life. I'm ready to do the beginning. I'm ready to start over. One, this is the biggest decision you'll ever make. A no decision is a decision not to follow. Two, when I say three, raise your hand saying that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want a new start. I want to follow Jesus. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand there. I see the hand there. I see the hand over there. Anybody else? I see the hand, honey. I see the hand. I see the hand over there. I see the hand over there. Proud of you. Proud of you. I want those that raise their hands. Could you, I'm going to tell you, there's somebody else that didn't raise their hand and you're saying, like, what's going on? There's a fight inside of you. Don't let the negativity, don't let the wrong thought, don't let the doubt, don't let procrastination stop you from making the best decision of your life. When I count the three, I want those to raise their hand. Even if you didn't raise your hand, but you're ready for a new start. I want those to raise their hand. Stand up real quick. Just stand up real quick. Stand up where you're at. Those to raise their hand. Proud of you. Proud of you, honey. It, raise your hand. Just stand up. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Awesome. I want everybody to join them right now. Stand up with them. And I want those to raise their hand. Can you come forward real quick up here? Give me the honor and privilege of praying with you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to say nothing in front of everybody. But this is a sign of you taking your first step to following Jesus. Come on. Just come on up. Even if you, if you raise your hand and you didn't stand up, just come up real quick. We're just going to pray with you. Come on, we're going to help you with your next step. After service is all I want you to do. Sign up for, sign up, sign up for, well, number one, lead night tonight, 6 o'clock. Someone say 6 o'clock. Be here 5.30. 6 o'clock. There's only 284 seats left. Um, number two, outside there's going to be opportunities to join Holy Warriors, February 28th. You're going to be able to sign up for Holy Warriors out there. That's your, show up, to, sign up for class show up to class. You're going to take some action. And number three, if you're saying, I want to start teaching a Bible study in my home, or I want to start leading a, a discipleship group in my home, I want to start teaching the growth book in my home, sign up to teach. 90% of what you teach, you retain. Some of you right now are waiting to get your act together to teach, and God says, if you start teaching, you'll get your act together. Come on, accept the responsibility. I'm going to start teaching right now. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. We're going to accept Jesus. Proud of you guys. Let's do this. Are we ready? 
Are we ready to follow Jesus? Come on, are you ready to sign up to follow Jesus? You know what that means? Next week, you're going to show up. Tonight, if you can, show up. Be, be exposed to leadership. Let's pray together. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me, Lord, of my sins. I know that the price for my sins was suffering and death. I believe you suffered, you died for my sins so that I could be forgiven and receive the free gift of eternal life and salvation from judgment. I repent of all my sins. I'm done doing it my way. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord, my Savior, my teacher, from this day forward, I will do it your way, not my way. Your will be done on earth the way it is in heaven. I receive the free gift of eternal life, forgiveness, and freedom from the power of addiction. In Jesus' name, I pray. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. If you're here, stay right here. We're going to pray with you, get your information, and help you sign up for your next class and get ready to become a scholar in the Word of God. We love you. God bless you. Sign up. Take some action. Teaching without action produces no results. Tonight, you don't want to miss it. Most important meeting of the year, instructions to growth. We love you. You need prayer coming up. We have teams that will pray with you. Don't leave here with your burden. Don't leave here with your pain. Let's give it to Jesus. Prayer does change things. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for being such a great audience. Everyone online, thank you for tuning in. We love you. Let's keep showing up to class and keep getting the results. Love you guys.